Hello everyone! My name is Lorenzo Ryuto. I'm a second year student at LPU Cavite. And today, I'm going to discuss to you all about the pivotal element method and the Kramer's rule in order to evaluate determinants. But first, don't forget to subscribe to Engineer Phil's channel. He's a great professor, and if you're having trouble with your math subjects, you can take a visit on his channel, okay? So, without further ado, here we have the pivotal element method. What is the determinant of a matrix? The determinant of a matrix is a special number that can be calculated from a square matrix. Why is it called pivot then? What is the pivot element? Pivot element is the element of a matrix, <coughs> excuse me, which is selected first by an algorithm to do certain calculations. So we have a review here where matrix A is composed of elements A, B, a, B C, D, wherein the determinant of A is equals to A times D minus B. C. So why do we call it the pivot anyway? Uh, because physically a pivot is an object where something revolves around. It, okay, so here our solution revolves around the pivot element. It is a method in finding the determinant of a matrix of order n. The pivot element method centers a solution of finding a pivot element which is 1. Okay, so remember that. Creating an n minus 1 determinant from here. So we have steps here. You can pause the video to take a screenshot. Okay. Now we have an example. So we, uh, you're going to notice here we have a 4 by 4 matrix. And the first step is to choose our element unity 1. We have multiple ones here. We have one here, we have one here, we have another one here. But for the sake of this example, we're going to use this one. Okay. So. Element i j stands for i stands for the row number and j stands for the column number. So our pivotal element is a sub two one, uh, row two, column one. Okay. So step two is to cross out the row and rows and columns that uh, intersects through the pivotal element. So this is the column and this is the row. Okay. We're gonna cross them out. And the resulting determinant A is negative 1 raised to i plus j. Remember, our i is 2, row 2, and j is our column 1, so 1. So negative 1 raised to 2 plus 1. Right? Our next step is 2. We have remaining entries here, okay? That will be a 3 by 3 matrix because we took one row and one column out. So 14, we're going to write down 14 here. We're going to subtract it by the numbers it intersects with in the crossed out column and row. So here we have 2, here we have 5. So 14 minus 2 times 5. Okay, I hope that's clear. Here's another example. Here we have negative 2. The numbers that it intersects with will be 5 and 1. So negative 2 minus the product of 1 and 5. Okay, so we have 3 here. Uh, the numbers that it intersects with will be 2 and negative 1. Okay, so 3 minus 2 negative, times negative 1, okay? That will give us this matrix right here. If we input it to the calculator, uh, we're going to have a value of 326. But what if we don't have uh, that opportunity to put in the calculator? That's okay. Again, we're going to use the pivot element here. But as you can notice, there's no 1 here, okay? We're going to make our own. So if you've noticed here, we have two 5s here. One is a positive, one is a negative. So we can take out a negative 5 here in order to make this corner 1, okay? And that will transform this entire row, okay? This row only, okay? So we have taken out negative 5. We're going to cross out the row and column that intersects with the pivot element. So negative 1 raised to 1 plus 3 because this is located at column 1. Oh, I'm sorry. The first row and the third column, okay? Sorry about that. So, using the same method that I have discussed a while ago, this will give us a 2x2 two two matrix right here. A 2x2 two two matrix can simply be solved by using the Leibniz formula. We subtract this one to this one, and uh, I'm sorry, we multiply this one, we multiply this one to this one, and subtract it by the product of this one. Okay, that will give us 326. Now we have the Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is an explicit formula for the solution of a system of linear equations with as many equations as unknowns. A system of linear equations is basically a set of linear equations. Okay? Linear equation means uh, all the variables have an exponent of 1. 
the determinant for A, B, C, D, this is a matrix, is A, D minus B, C. Okay? The Kramer's rule will introduce to this formula. We have X is equals to D sub X is over D, and Y is equals to D sub Y over D. So please remember that. What if we have a 3 by 3 matrix? Then we're going to add one more formula here for Z, where Z is equals to uh, D sub Z over D. Okay. Next. These are certain properties that will help you in solving problems. You can post the video again and take a screenshot. All right. For our example, we have two linear equations here. 3x minus 2y is equals to negative 4. 4x minus y is equals to 3. Okay. So in order to find the solution for this using the Kramer's rule, we're going to first find the determinant D. Okay. How do we do that is we create a matrix D composed of A1, A2, B1, and B2. Uh, if you're wondering, where did this come from? Uh, A1 is this one, 3. And A2 is 4. B1 is negative 2. B2 is negative 1. There's a 1 right here. Uh, C1 is this one, okay? And C2 is this one, okay? I hope that's clear. So, if we substitute those values to our matrix, we will have this matrix again. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. We can solve this using the simple formula, right? This one, we multiply 3 by negative 1 minus the product of negative 2 and 4. That will give us D is equals to 5. So after getting the determinant, we're going to find the values of DX and DY. This is the formula for DX, okay? C1, C2, B1, and B2. Again, I've taught you which one is C and which one is B. Substituting the, form, uh, the values here, will give, the, uh, give us this matrix, and if we solve this matrix, the value will be 10. For dy, this will be the formula. Again, another matrix, and if we substitute the values, this will give us uh, operation, which will equate to 25. Okay. Now that we have three values here, we can now finally look for the values of x and y, the unknown variables of our linear equations. So, x is equals to d sub x over d. Our d sub x is 10. Our d is 5. So 10 over 5 is 2. x is equals to 2. Okay. Now for y, y is equals to the d sub y over d. Our d sub y is 25. Our d is 5. Therefore, 25 over 5 is equals to 5. Okay. Now we have a value for y. This is y is equals to 5. So now that, uh, we're done, but how do we know if our answers are correct? We can simply uh, substitute x and y into our original equations, okay? So, 3x minus 2y is equals to negative 4. 3 times 2 minus 2 uh, times 5, okay? Here we have this one. 6 minus 10 is negative 4. Negative 4 is equals to negative 4. Therefore, our answer is correct. And for our second equation, if we substitute our values to our second equation, that should also give us an equality of... 3 is equals to 3. Okay? So, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope that you've learned something. So, thank you for watching and don't forget, again, to subscribe to Engineer Phil. Thank you and have a nice day.